This video is intended to be viewed as a supplement to the operating manual that is included in your kiln. While it does offer an overview of the setup and operation procedures, please refer to the printed manual for detailed instructions. Congratulations! You've made a decision to purchase one of the finest quality kilns available. Your new Amico kiln will provide you with years of trouble-free service with minimal care and attention. However, it is very important to inspect the kiln before attempting to assemble it to make sure that there are no broken or missing parts. If any loss or damage is discovered, refer to page 1 of the manual and the section titled Lost or Damaged Goods. A kiln should be located conveniently near the power source. The location should be carefully planned to avoid unnecessary moving of the heavy equipment. Allow at least 18 inches of space between the kiln and the adjacent walls. It should be placed in a well-ventilated, sheltered area away from any flammable materials. It is absolutely essential that your power supply has been correctly installed by a licensed electrician. Amperage ratings, voltage, phase, and the serial number are found on the metal plate affixed to the side of the kiln. Square kilns are usually installed by licensed electricians or maintenance personnel. However, before test firing, be sure all packing materials or literature are removed from the firing chamber. Open the box lid. Remove the plastic cover and carefully remove the kiln stand, literature, and parts bag from the inside of the kiln. Take the black plastic feet from the parts bag and put them on the stand legs. Place the stand on a level floor in the location you have designated for the kiln. If you have purchased an optional kiln vent stand, the appropriate holes must be drilled before placing the kiln base on the vent stand. Consult your kiln vent manual for specific instructions. The electronic control panel has a hinged box for easy removal. Remove the attached screws on the left side of the panel box. Swing the panel to the side. Slide the connectors off of the terminals. Notice that each wire is labeled with its corresponding terminal connection. Also slide the thermocouple connector off the terminal strip. Lift the box up to remove it. After unfastening the alignment buckles, with the help of a partner, lift each section of the kiln using the lower section handles and place them on a clean level surface. Position the kiln floor on top of the stand, making certain that the weight is evenly distributed. If the stand needs to be leveled, place firm shims under the legs, never above them touching the kiln. Center the kiln's bottom slab on the stand and double check for teetering. Again, with a partner, pick up the kiln sections beginning with the lower one and place them on top of the kiln floor in the correct order, making sure to align the buckles. Also, make sure the control box is in a convenient position for operation. Replace the control box and reconnect all wires and the thermocouple in their original position. If the lid was removed, replace it, making sure to attach the lid rod, cotter pin, and brace. When the setup and installation of your kiln is complete, you're nearly ready for the test fire. But first, remove any brick chips, dust, or other debris by vacuuming the inside of the kiln chamber and the elements. Apply Amico Kiln Wash to shelves according to product directions. Now you're ready to begin the test fire. Place shelves and posts in a way that allows viewing of the self-supporting O4 pyrometric cones through the peepholes during the firing. These cones should be used in each firing to check the exact temperatures attained in the top, middle, and bottom of the firing chamber. This is done to check whether the maximum temperature was reached in all sections of the chamber and helps explain variations in glaze results. New elements give off smoke during the first test fire. This is normal and expected. You will notice a clicking sound when your kiln fires. 
This is the element cycling on and off to stay within the program temperature parameters. To activate the touchpad and clear the PF message, press Enter. Press Cone Fire Mode. Press 04, then Enter. Press Medium Speed, then Enter. Press Enter, or the amount of time in hours and minutes for hold. Press Start to begin the firing. The firing will take approximately seven and a half hours. We recommend you be present when the kiln shuts off. If you are observing the cone, remember to use kiln gloves to remove the peephole plug. It will be hot. The cone should bend and the kiln should turn off at approximately the same time. The Select Fire Controller frees you from constant monitoring of the kiln. The cone fire mode allows you to use one of the three preset firing programs. With cone range values from 022 to 10, it is specifically designed to adjust the rate at the end of the firing to the correct cone temperature based on the observed firing rate. It also has a hold cycle. The majority of firings can be done with these three modes. This can be fired in the slow mode, and most glaze firings are done in either the medium or the slow mode. The permanent program memory protects entered programs in case of a power failure and memorizes up to six separate ramp hold programs for repeating specific bisque and glaze firings. Easy to follow instructions for setting the ramp hold programs are included in the operation manual. A segment has three components. It has a heating rate, a temperature, and a hold time. It can be programmed to either raise or lower the temperature. The ramp hold feature lets you create your own firing program by selecting up to eight segments of temperature change and hold. A controlled cooling rate can be programmed for glass and other specialized firings. The program review key shows you what program is currently in use. The delay firing start feature allows you to delay the start time so that the kiln will shut off at a convenient time for you to be present. To change the display from Fahrenheit to Celsius, in the stop mode, press the Celsius key These errors vary. For example, the controller is not receiving a signal from the thermocouple or the elements are too weak to reach or hold a program temperature. A list of these nine error messages and possible causes and corrections are found in the printed operating manual. You may want to create your own custom firing program. For this exercise, we will use an example of a cone 5 firing of approximately 10 hours as shown in the operating manual. Begin by pressing the ramp hold key. Press 1 and then enter. This means your program will be the first or number one program held in memory. Key the desired amount of segments you intend to use. For practice purposes, press 5 and enter. It is now asking you to input the rate of temperature increase per hour. Key in 150 degrees and enter. Now the controller is asking for the target temperature of the first segment. Key in 250 degrees. Next, input the hold time. In this case, we will use 10 minutes. The controller is now looking for the temperature increase per hour for the second segment. We will enter 250 degrees, followed by the target temperature of 1,000 degrees and a hold time of 10 minutes. For the third segment, enter a temperature increase rate of 180 degrees per hour and a target temperature of 1,150 degrees with a hold time of zero. Give the fourth segment an increase rate of 300 degrees per hour and a target temperature of 1,915 degrees and a hold time of 10 minutes.
For the fifth and final segment, enter a value of 108 degrees for the temperature increase rate and a target temperature of 2,165 degrees with a hold time of zero. At this point, the alarm mode is flashing along with a value of 9999. If you choose not to have the alarm sound, simply press enter. If you want the alarm to activate, input the desired alarm temperature in degrees. For example, on this program, the maximum target temperature is 2,165 degrees. You may want to set the alarm temperature at 20 degrees below the max temperature so you can visually check the pyometric cones just before the completion of the firing. To delay the start of the firing to coincide with a convenient finish time for you, simply press the delay button and input the amount of time in hours and minutes that you wish to delay the start of the firing. Be sure to correctly calculate the length of the firing time. Once the start button is keyed, the delay time will appear and begin to count down. For more detailed information or questions not covered in this video or the printed manual, contact us at 1-800-374-1600. Since 1919, American Art Clay Company has been the largest manufacturer of ceramic supplies and equipment for art teachers, professional potters, and artists. Amico, quality artist products for your school and studio.